Semyon Zukoryanski. Actually, all of the computation uh, were done by Eli Barami, PhD student Eli Barami. And in this work, <clears throat> we have a number of collaborators, uh, Arkady Kapusta and Boris Mikhailovich from Center uh, for MHD Studies at Ben Gurion University, and Efit Semach uh, from um, uh, Nuclear Research Center in Israel. So, uh, this research is conducted in cooperation between the Center for MHD Studies at, BG, at Ben Gurion University and the Nuclear Research Center. Um, at Nuclear Research Center, they are now um, construct new high-power superconducting linear accelerator for protons and neutrons. Uh, it's under construction now. <clears throat> And the, the, one of the main purposes of this accelerator is to produce uh, radioisotopes for medical applications. Um, the, um, the, the talk is, is uh, quite, uh, be belongs to applied study mostly. Um, it's one part of the big, big, big study when we, uh, we try to use different kind of uh, production of uh, um, radioisotopes. And one of the methods of production of radioisotopes is to put liquid metal inside of a container, the, the target that will be irradiated by a uh, um, uh, beam of protons. Uh, and if, for example, uh, the target is filled with lithium as a liquid metal, then during the radiation, uh, the beryllium will be produced, which is a source of neutron for uh, medical applications, boron neutron um, uh, therapy. A typical target contains liquid metal uh, placed in a container, which is covered by a thin metallic uh, foil. Now, the, um, uh, due to the interaction between the um, uh, pro protons and liquid metal, the uh, uh, material inside the target becomes, um, uh, becomes uh, radiate, radioactive. Um, and the uh, uh, kinetic energy of protons is converted into uh, heat, which is absorbed in the, in, the, in the target. The total heat release, total kinetic energy ex actually of uh, protons is uh, 20 kilowatt. And this, all this fl uh, flux of uh, protons is uh, concentrated in a rather small area uh, uh, such that the uh, total heat flux for square meter, uh, square meter is 200 megawatt, which is very high. This high flux uh, generates high temperature at local point close to the center of the target. And uh, far away from this point, the temperature is close to the ambient temperature. So the high temperature gradients are generated in, inside the target. Uh, this um, uh, high, uh, high, high gradients may cause damage to the target itself. For example, it may create uh, cracks in the foil that cover the target. So the heat, high heat flux removal is a very important problem to solve before this uh, um, application will be used. Um, now, the liquid metal becomes radioactive, so one cannot uh, apply any mechanical means to uh, enhance heat transfer in, inside the target. Uh, also, natural convection is, is uh, very insufficient. It actually doesn't do much. 
So the um, heat uh, distribution remains uh, with, with very high gradients if nothing uh, special can be done, done with it. So we suggest to use rotating magnetic field to, to, pro to produce uh, forced convection. Uh, rotation, rotating magnetic field will be uh, not intrusive, so it, it would be um, very safe and reliable. Now, the typical uh, target looks like you see on this picture. Here the beam of proton, and here the target placed in size, inside. Uh, this is a schematic diagram of the target. Um, it's not in, in correct scales. The uh, maximal length here is about 9 centimeter, but the uh, width is just 1.5 millimeter. It's very, very narrow target. So the um, uh, flow should be uh, very weak here. That's what happens. Uh, that's the main reason why the natural convection doesn't help here. Now, we suggest to place uh, inductor of magnetic field at the bottom size of the target and generate the rotating magnetic field to, to produce circulation and force convection. Um, this is one of the possible um, inductors with six poles. A magnetic field, uh, sorry, the electrical current is three phase three-phase current, which generates rotating magnetic field. Um, and uh, we hope to uh, remove the heat more efficiently with such a mixing. Uh, now, analytical solution for such uh, complicated geometry, uh, of course, doesn't exist. So we use number simpli simplifying assumptions. First simplifying assumption is that a magnetic Reynolds number is small, and that's really uh, the fact, um, because magnetic diffusivity is an order of one, and the size of the target is small. So the induced magnetic field is much smaller than the field generated in the inductor. So uh, we have to uh, compute only the field generated in the inductor and then use it for, as a part of the Lorentz force in Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, now, the uh, geometry is cylindrical. Um, uh, in, uh, we assume that uh, inductor currents are localized at the surface attached to the target base. So that's, of course, is, um, is not accurate representation, but as we, we will see uh, uh, later, it, it uh, produced rather good results. So instead of uh, all the coils in, in the inductor, we have just uh, surface cu currents at the back side of the target. Now, uh, due to uh, uh, harmonic dependence of the current, uh, electrical current, the solution is also uh, uh, harmonically time and angular dependent. So that uh, is another very important simplification. Uh, now I will show you that there is approximate solution for the magnetic field, and this solution uh, will be used, first of all, it cl clarifies the physics of, of the, of the uh, um, phenomenon. Then it, will be, it can be used as, uh, in a parametric study to uh, quickly find the optimal or near optimal parameters for the, um, uh, for the, 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 the whole uh, apparatus. Okay, so. Now, the analytical model. Uh, first of all, we, we uh, defined vector potential uh, because the magnetic field is non-divergent, solenoidal, so vector potential can be defined and with Coulomb um, uh, calibration, divergence of uh, vector potential is equal to zero. Uh, then, of course, Induction equation 
uh, can be derived from Maxwell equation and Ohm's law for uh, moving conducting media. So that's a basic equation for the magnetic field generated by inductor. Um, uh, now, if we, if we find, if we solve this equation, find vector potential, then we can compute currents inside uh, the liquid metal just by using Ampere's law. And uh, another uh, simplification is that due to the uh, cylindrical geometry and uh, time dependence, harmonic time dependence, actually we have to find only radial component of the vector potential, and then using the continuity equation, we can find uh, azimuthal compo component and uh, radial component of uh, current inside the liquid metal and Z component, I mean vector co component of magnetic field. So with radial component of uh, uh, the uh, current density and uh, uh, vertical component of magnetic field, we compute um, uh, the uh, main force, which is azimuthal in this case, J cross B, that generate the circulation of liquid metal. So uh, first we have to specify boundary condition for radial component of the uh, vector potential. Uh, they are rather simple. The uh, vector potential is non-singular in the center of the target. Uh, then it is equal to zero at the outer uh, external radius of the target because the current doesn't leave the target. Uh, uh, there is no conducting material outside of the target. So that uh, gives us uh, uh, another boundary condition that far away from the target magnetic field tends to zero. And uh, uh, the additional um, boundary condition is at the, uh, at the current surface when we, where we specify surface currents and uh, using Ampere law uh, and taking into account that um, the inductor, is, inductor core is made of uh, ferromagnetic material with uh, uh, magnetic probability very high, we can use this, use this boundary condition to find uh, boundary condition for magnetic field or for A at Z equal to zero. Now, uh, first we make non-dimensionalization of the parameter. Um, there is interesting parameter uh, which is non-dimensional frequency. It's the frequency of the uh, AC current divided by, uh, multiplied by characteristic time of uh, uh, magnetic field uh, di diffusion uh, over the length, over the width of the target. So that's uh, non-dimensional parameter which is quite important. Now, uh, uh, because, because the uh, A uh, vector potential is solenoidal, we uh, can find dependence between radial component and azimuthal component. And we assume that all, all components of uh, vector potential uh, depend on the time and the azimuthal angle, angular, angle in the uh, harmonic wave, uh, harmonic wave. So um, after s s uh, substitution of um, uh, all these components into uh, divergence of A equal to zero, we find that uh, uh, azimuthal component and radial component differ on angle phi zero, which is pi over two. This is very important because as you can see, when we write the equation for the radial component of uh, vector potential, uh, we see that the left side of this equation is uh, real, while the uh, right side is imaginary. So both of them are equal to zero. That uh, is a strong simplification which allows me to solve 
the um, uh, red, red head sun equation in this simple way by um, uh, just uh, separation of variables R and Z. And the solution will be presented as a series of Bessel function of first kind and exponential decay with a, a, a characteristic uh, scale of the decay uh, as an eigenvalue, eigenvalue of the uh, characteristic equation. Now, uh, gamma here are just uh, uh, roots of uh, Bessel function. And this is due to boundary condition, which I explained on the previous slide. So that's, that's a solution. Uh, C and D are coefficients which can be found easily by integrating the currents at the base of the target. And here you see the results in graphic form. So uh, uh, also it's not in the scale, the vertical scale is uh, non-dimensionalized by the width of the target, which is rather small, and the horizontal uh, is uh, dimensionalized by the radius. Uh, this is a magnetic field uh, near the pole. So we see that uh, our assumption that it will be uh, mostly in the vertical direction, so, so the main component, the vertical component is uh, really reproduced itself. Uh, and this is uh, quite an accurate solution in the area close to the pole. Outside of the pole, of course, uh, far away from it, the solution is not accurate uh, because uh, geometry is uh, very uh, simplified relative to real geometry. So real geometry, you, you uh, see on, on, on the following uh, slide. So one can, cannot solve the uh, magnetic field with this real geometry. So the numerical calculation uh, were used in self uh, uh, by means of ANSYS Maxwell, Maxwell code. Uh, numerical conversion are rather time computing, so, computing, so we used uh, parallel computer, computer with uh, um, high, highly efficient computer. Now, the analytical solution for uh, um, flow uh, can be f uh, uh, found, but it doesn't make sense because it's a uh, laminar solution, and the real flow is turbulent very much turbulent. So uh, I don't show you the analytical solution for the, for the flow and just go to the uh, numerical, numerical solution. Uh, now, we use uh, ANSYS Fluent to solve the Navier-Stokes equation with Lorentz force J cross B. Um, magnetic induction method were, uh, was used for solving the MHD equation and I explained here shortly what it means. And for uh, uh, turbulence computation, we use a large eddy simulation option with the Smagarinsky viscosity. But uh, because we, uh, the um, uh, um, number of elements is very high, uh, we have uh, more than 3 million elements, uh, most of them in the horizontal. Um, uh, so the, because of the very small size of element, the Reynolds, the hydrodynamic Reynolds number is inside the element is smaller than one. So LES doesn't help much. It's basically direct numerical simulation. And also the magnetic field doesn't affect the, the, the turbulent viscosity uh, also because of the, the same reason. The characteristic time of uh, turbulence inside the element is very short relative to the time of um, uh, characteristic time of magnetic field. So um, we check that uh, the, the simulation doesn't depend on uh, number of elements above this number. We increase it, but the, uh, the result re remain the same. Uh, here you see the typical Snapshot. Actually, it's not snapshot. It's a mean velocity uh, at uh, time when the uh, flow reached steady state. We moved. We shifted the inductor from.
from the center to the area where the, the, the heating is the, the, the most intense uh, uh, in order to generate highest velocity in this region. Uh, now, I will show you a short video of uh, velocity field. So what, what you can see here, that there is uh, vortex uh, generated by magnetic field, but the interesting that there, there is a counter-rotating vortex uh, attached to this one, uh, one vortex in this direction, another one in this direction, and also the flow is three-dimensional, so there is uh, um, vorticity also in the, in the vertical. So uh, it looks like we can generate quite efficient mixing using the uh, rotating magnetic field. The flow is very turbulent, and we expect uh, significant improvement of heat transfer. We will see it on the next slide. So uh, on, two, uh, on the uh, left figure here, uh, there is a temperature distribution, temperature contour without magnetic field. So you see high temperature spot in the center this temperature reaching, I forgot the number, something 800, above 800 degrees Kelvin. Uh, when we applied magnetic field, this hot spot significantly uh, decreased. It didn't, uh, didn't disappear completely, but it is much less hot. Now, the difference between these two is shown on this slide. So you see that the, the, uh, in the center of the uh, uh, target, the reduction of the temperature is uh, highest, and there is also increase of the temperature in some adjusted, uh, adjacent areas. So the gradient uh, of the temperature uh, in the horizontal plane and also in the vertical will decrease. Uh, you can see the movie uh, of the uh, effect of the rotating magnetic field of the temperature, I will explain first what you will see. At the beginning, you see the heating of the target by the beam of protons when the temperature uh, reaches steady state. Then we uh, apply magnetic field, and you will see how the temperature decreases. So let's start the movie. You see that the uh, high temperature spot in the center just disappears. So it's a very effective method, uh, non-intrusive, uh, very reliable, and uh, easy to apply to uh, significantly increase heat transfer. Now I come to the conclusions. So um, uh, we have an analytical solution. It's uh, not bad for the magnetic field. It's not accurate for, for um, uh, hydrodynamic field, which is very, uh, very, very clear because the flow is turbulent. Uh, but uh, with analytical solution, we can find the area of parameters where we have to look for and use this area of parameters for optimization using more advanced numerical tools. Um, now, the numerical simulation proved that the application of rotating magnetic field allows one to achieve the main goal of the project, which is uh, to decrease the gradients and decrease the highest temperature by at least 60 degrees. Uh, degree, degrees Kelvin, we, we saw in uh, uh, certain areas the temperature drop up to 150 degrees. So the, uh, the goal was achieved. Also, from an analytical solution, we easily see that the effect of magnetic field is proportional to uh, frequency of the electrical current, but it, it is correct only uh, until the certain value of the frequency. Above this value, uh, there is an uh, optimal 
value of the frequency above which uh, uh, increasing the frequency of the electrical field would not help and even uh, work in the opposite way because the, um, there is increase in uh, reactive uh, resistivity of uh, the coils and some other uh, effects that uh, make it uh, not worse to, to go above certain optimal frequency of the electrical field. Now, uh, it's an ongoing project. Um, the next st uh, stage that I didn't show yet um, is to, to use different geometry of the inductor and different connection of the inductor poles in order to generate running magnetic field instead of the rotating field and oriented in such a way that that will be jet uh, stream of the flow uh, which will sweep the high temperature area outside of the uh, uh, area of the high heating. And we uh, uh, think, suppose, that it will be more effective even than uh, uh, the use of rotating field, but uh, this experiment uh, is not finished. Now, uh, in addition to numerical simulation, we also made a laboratory experiment, and it will be uh, presented in, the, in another talk by another uh, graduate student, uh, Tsaki Shukrun, uh, during this conference. So please come visit him and ask the questions. Thank you very much.